All right, so here is another video, and today we are going to talk about a feature Microsoft released today, or rather go over one. This one is Microsoft Viva Topics. So this is the day of the release, and like all good IT pros, I went out and I already bought a subscription. Also like all good IT pros, we're going to go through and try to enable it without reading any documentation, or maybe we'll get partway through an open documentation. We don't know. But to intro this, Viva's released Viva Topics in Microsoft's own words, so from their release notes, uses artificial intelligence or AI to empower people with knowledge and expertise in Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft 365 apps they use every day to connect, manage, and protect content across your system in Teams. It's built on the content platform services of Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Graph, yada, 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 yada. This is actually originally, uh, from what it appears, based on my understanding, was going to be part of Project Cortex and is now released as part of Microsoft Viva. So there were four platforms or four areas within Microsoft Viva that were announced today. Topics, learning, insights, and connections. Uh, topics is the only one that was available today. So this is the one we're going to go play with. Uh, we'll probably actually talk about all of these on uh, an upcoming episode of the Microsoft Cloud IT Pro podcast that I co-host. So I will leave a link to that down in the uh, description below if you want to go check it out. But for now, let's dive into enabling Microsoft Viva and see what we can do with it within my Microsoft 365 tenant. All right, so here we go. I'm in my Microsoft 365 tenant. Like I said, we're gonna play with Microsoft Viva Topics. Uh, to this point, I have gone out and signed up for a trial of the license. And if you want to see that, go down, look in the uh, description of the video. I will link to where you can go sign up for the trial, get it enabled in your tenant. While you're down there getting that link, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, all that good stuff down there so that you can keep seeing future videos like this. I'll keep throwing them out. I love playing with new stuff. So as soon as something new comes out and I can take a video of it while I play with it, uh, even better. So back to enabling it. Here I have my admin center. Like I said, I went in, purchased purchased the license, signed up for the trial of the license, and I have assigned it to my user, which is also a global admin. So that is all the further I have taken this. Uh, the documentation when I first started playing with this was a little sparse. Maybe it's out there more now. Maybe I just couldn't find it because nothing had indexed all the pages yet. But I did figure out where this is kind of based off of enabling project syntax. So once you've purchased the license, you've gone in, assigned it to a user, you can actually go under your settings and pop open your organizational settings and it is in here. So I frankly just started scrolling through here. I kind of knew I was looking for something related to Viva and topics. Um, the content one, you'll see, I think I already went past it. Uh, content understanding is one of those areas of syntax. So I figured, well, why not have Viva in here too? And here it is, topics experience, or at least this is what I'm assuming it is because I've never seen this before and it's topics and this is Viva topics. And it has a little SharePoint logo by it, which means it's, again, probably part of Cortex, even though this is now in Teams, part of Microsoft Viva. And we can go ahead and click on this. And what do we have other than a loading circle? We've already broken topics. There we go. Topics represents knowledge, organization, users, set up Viva Topics. So here we go. This is Viva Topics. Now we can view the Viva Topics setup details. So not even a link to enable it here. Just view the setup details. Let's click on it and connect people to knowledge. Help people discover subjects. Okay, great. Uh, see some documentation here. Topics of interest for your users. It's going to use AI content understanding about it. Uh, at a glance, this is probably what we care about. Suggested role, SharePoint admin. I'm a global admin, but it looks like you could probably do this as a SharePoint admin too. Viva topic status, it's inactive. Yep, I haven't turned it on yet. Topic center address is not yet available. All right, so let's go ahead and get started since I haven't started yet. Uh, Viva topics can help find topics. 
select our SharePoint topic sources. Uh, so it looks like here you could select sources. I'm going to guess like maybe for instance, you wouldn't necessarily want this applying to an HR site or if your executives have a site and you don't necessarily want SharePoint topics to crawl all of those, you could exclude some of those sites or maybe you only want it to apply to certain sites. It looks like you can select sites as well where you could just start searching. And I'm guessing in here, like if I started typing out demo, um, I'd get a bunch of my demo sites. For me, I'm just gonna apply it to all sites because that is how I roll. Uh, exclude topics, which contains names specified that will be excluded for discovery. This again is probably one of those security things where let's say you wanted to exclude a payroll for instance, because you didn't want payroll topics to surface up within your um, Viva topics, or maybe you didn't want something about maybe acquisitions to surface up within topics. Maybe you have some of those keywords for projects that you do tend to want to keep a little quieter. You don't want them to automatically surface up. Uh, that's where you could go in, exclude them. Looks like it's all based on a CSV template. They give you a nice template to go download, check out that template. Uh, we can even download it, open it. And I'm guessing that there's not a whole lot here to look at, but we'll take a glance at it anyways and just see what it looks like. They do have a few columns. So this isn't just a cut and dry one column. Looks like name, uh, expansion, a match type. So if it's an exact or partial, that can be kind of nice. So this is definitely more, like I said, than just a single column. Learn more about excluding topics in your organization. I'll throw a link to this too, uh, where it goes through and uh, this actually walks through setting up everything, excluding topics, uh, all time low, exact name stands for is optional. So stands for must be expansion. Uh, it looks like that's just acronym. So expansion, here you see, like if you have an, a three letter acronym here and you want to know what that actually stands for, uh, I don't know. I wonder if you could put synonyms in there as well. I'm assuming you could also put synonyms in there, but I don't really know. That would be something else to play with. I'm going to have to go back and play with some of these later, but I will also link to this setup, Microsoft Viva Topics, Plan for Topics, Topics for Security. Uh, this is that documentation I couldn't necessarily find earlier, but it looks like that is out there, that is available. I'm not going to exclude any topics for now. Uh, let's just go ahead and include everything. Uh, as we're looking through this too, I'm including everything. They have some of that exclusions. I am also going to make the assumption that based on how SharePoint works and everything that's in SharePoint and Microsoft 365, this is also security trimmed. So if you've done security, right, it's not like it's going to surface content up to people and they're not going to have access to it. If HR has access to the HR site and only they have access to it, these topics will work for the HR department on the HR site, but you're not going to get somebody else out on a shop floor or uh, in some other department that's going to get content they don't have access to. Uh, so we've included everything. Let's go click next. Uh, who can see topics and where they can see them? Uh, so it looks like here, maybe you don't want, again, users, maybe you want to crawl all the content, but you don't necessarily want this shown to a subset of workers. Maybe you have, for instance, contractors and contractors don't need to see all of this information bubbling up from all over your organization. You just want it to be for internal employees, tie it to certain security groups. Like if you do have all your contractors in a security group, you could do that. Uh, again, for me, I'm going to leave it as everyone looks like only selected people. I can probably turn this on and surface it to no one. I'm not really sure what that would do unless I wanted to turn it on and start it running and then slowly trickle it in. Yeah, not really sure why you choose no one there, but we're gonna keep going with leaving this wide open. So it's gonna be to everyone who can create and edit topics. Oh, so it looks like if you do want to, you can go create new topics and I'm it's probably going to use that topic that you create as that kind of starting point to go bubble it up. Okay, I want to 
learn about clients. So what's it going to bubble up about clients? Or going back to our HR example, vacation time. Maybe vacation is a topic or PTO, and you want that to bubble up. I'm going to guess this ties to who can go create those new topics to let the AI start doing its work to gather all that knowledge around a topic. Uh, Same type of thing as before, where you could do everyone, you could only select people or groups. Again, I could probably do internal, intelligent internal employees. That's one of my security groups. Uh, Let's actually leave that. We'll change this up a little bit, not leave it wide open. Uh, And then who can manage topics? Uh, Looks like we're going to get some type of topic management dashboard uh, to review topics across the organization, view feedback on topics, confirm or reject. So it also sounds like if you're confirming or rejecting topics that maybe people can create them, you can send them through some type of approval process so people can actually confirm or reject. This one I'm also going to put as only selected people and I am going to just put myself in for this one. I want to control the topics. Great. Next, topic center name. A SharePoint site where users have the personalized view of relevant knowledge across. So why not? I mean, this is Microsoft Viva Topics, right? So why not call it Microsoft Viva Topics? Sites. I'm going to leave this in sites. I tend to use sites for these types of things in my organization and then use teams for collaboration type sites. So I'll leave that sites. I'm fine with the Microsoft Viva Topics the URL. It's pulling out the spaces, so I'm great with that. Description, learn more about the topics. Yep, we're all good with that. Now we can go ahead and review it. Everything we set, great. Let's go ahead and activate this. Settings are being applied and may take a few minutes. Please do not close the window. All right, I will leave this window open. We'll let it run. I'm gonna come back to this video. You don't need to just sit here and watch it run, but overall, it looks like it was fairly straightforward to activate this, to turn it on, enable it within the tenant. Uh, And now we're up and going with Viva. Once the site creates, we'll come back and start customizing it. All right, so Viva has been activated. In my environment, that took just over 60 seconds, so really wasn't bad. It wasn't even a few minutes. It was just a minute or so. Uh, We now have our Topic Center address, so let's go ahead and pop this Topic Center open and see what we have. Microsoft Viva Topics, Home, Documents, Pages, I mean, typical SharePoint site so far, with nothing on it, but I still see it's processing. Give it a minute, maybe. I saw something flash up there for a moment. So this page definitely does not like me. Uh, I've tried a few things now. I've tried it in private. I've tried a couple browser windows. So it's been about 30, 40 minutes or so. And I am still getting nothing on the Viva Topics management page. So I'm thinking either something's broken or not fully provisioned in my tenant. I'm going to have to come back and do another YouTube video on actually managing it, configuring it once it gets stood up. So if you do follow this video along and activate it and you don't get anything, there's a chance they might not be fully provisioned. I don't really know. Uh, One thing I did notice is I was trying to load this, work with this page, and I am getting like some 403 errors on this topics uh, slash my and a few other errors that look like they could be related to topics. Uh, Sometimes what you run into is Microsoft 365 is a big platform. Maybe not all of the features required for this have fully been rolled out to all the servers. Uh, Maybe there's something going on in my tenant that hasn't been activated in the tenant, but for whatever reason, it appears like there's some type of backend issue going on with this. Again, because if you did watch closely, you saw the error message flash up. I'm getting these errors in the developer console. So I'll I'll come back, but I think there's something going on here. So it actually took about 12 hours, but my Viva Topics page started working. So last night, I actually recorded the first part of this video 
went to bed last night because I was getting errors. I showed you some of those at the end. Woke up this morning, lo and behold, everything was working. So over here, you can see we have our Microsoft Viva Topics page now. Everything loaded just fine. At this point in time, I'm not coming up with any suggested topics. Maybe as I continue to use my tenant, AI will pick something up. It'll see, here's a topic you could create a page on. But at this point in time, nothing's there. I wish I'd had a better example of a topic being automatically created for me. Unfortunately, I don't. But there you have the steps to get the Viva Topics set up, to get it configured. If you do set it up, go create the center and you're throwing errors like I showed earlier, apparently just give it some time. Give it 8, 10, 12 hours or so go to bed, come back to it the next day, and it should all be working. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, click the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can find out about more great videos as we continue to come up with these, talk about different admin topics, new features as they hit your tenant that you should be aware of and how to set them all up. So until next time, keep enjoying that Microsoft 365 environment.